Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Diane here, hope everyone is well and happy and healthy and ready to embark on another painting. Um, today I was going to do some daff uh, butterflies, not daffodils. <laughs> Um, so I've just drawn out a very simple design, a very simple sketch here with a few um, long grasses on the left and a kind of scattering of schmetterling and on the right hand side there, scattering of butterflies. And I'm going to do this all wet in wet and I'm going to do it all by dropping in colour. I'm using my Primatech colours here from um, Daniel Smith and at the end I'll probably use some of these golds and silvers perhaps this is from Kiritaki, Starry Colours, um, to embellish it, um, perhaps. And so where I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the grasses, and I've just drawn these in. You can have um, a copy of the sketch. If you go to our website, dianeanton.com, you can download all of our um, uh, sketches for free. Um, no obligation there to pay for anything. And I'm going to be trying this out. I, I haven't tested this yet, so I don't know if it's going to work, but if it doesn't work, we'll just do something else. So what I was going to do is, um, I need a palette to mix up some greens. Palette, where are you? I'll use this one, I think, which is quite a useful one because it's got lots of sections. So we'll just rearrange things slightly here. There we are. So now I'm going to take some of this green and add some of the brown uh, to give us a kind of soft, dark green. And I'm just going to guide that paint along the grass. And I'm going to just change the colour slightly, drop the paint in and guide it also along the grass. So we have a little bit more of a brownish shade here. We look at that go. Just guide it. And um, maybe we'll add a bit of red to make a sort of brown. And I'm feeling the need for just a smidgen of yellow. Oh, here we are. This is a, um, a yellow by um, Core. This is a Core colour. So we just brighten up the green a little bit. A little bit of yellow. Just drop that in. And the cool thing is the way the colours just run in the water which you've put on the paper before you started. And then we have some more down here. And they'll pick up the colour. And then maybe we'll take something a little bit darker. So some purple. And uh, just drop a few dark ones in. Like that. And uh, not sure if I can, yeah, that's Zen, one of our dogs barking, because the farmer next door is just coming in with her to take the cows in, and she shouts at the cows to get them to come home. Um, okay, so having done that, I'm thinking I might use a little bit of ink on that. So I'm just going to grab a pen. Oh, okay. I'm going to use the glass pen then. I couldn't find the dip pen. So this is a dip pen, but it's made of glass. So we'll just come in with some lines. 
where the grass is. Just to loosen it up a little bit. As it starts to dry, the paint, you can scratch into it and it gives you lines, which is another way of increasing texture. Light lines and dark lines, depending on how much the grasses have dried. So I'm going to leave that now and go on to the butterflies. So just pop my lid back on. And then we're going to basically do a similar sort of thing with the butterflies. We just wet the whole area. And then I think this one will start off with pink. And then maybe purple. Lift it out a little bit, maybe. And then we'll just let that do the usual thing. Do a little bit of magic. And then number two, I think maybe we'll do that uh, in blue. Let's find some cobalt blue here. Because this is core, it's just, you have to have a set of this to see the way this paint behaves because it doesn't behave like anything else I've ever used. It sort of floats on the surface of the water. It's, and then it finds its own way. So I'm going to add some purple in the tips of those butterflies and we'll see what that does because you never really know, as I've said many times before. And then uh, maybe we'll use some of this. Whoops, I haven't wet this one, have I? So I mustn't forget that. It's quite important. Oh, it's raining again. Um, Tam's in Zen's beds outside. So that's the um, Daniel Smith reddish brown colour. This is the core, and it's going to fight for attention by pushing back. And then I'll put a bit of purple at the top there, which will presumably bleed a little bit in and we'll see, see how that works. And then another one here. And uh, I think probably time for a little bit more pink. What do you think? So this is the core pink, wow. I think that's more like red, really. I will blot a little bit of that out because that's probably more than we need. But that was quite interesting, wasn't that, the way that moved? And then we'll come in with some purple. And maybe blue would be better than purple. And try some of this pink here. 
you're not happy with the way it looks to start with, just always lift some of it out and ask it to have another go. This is one where I feel uh, might be an idea to go along the outside edge a little bit like this. Sometimes, sometimes they just don't want to behave, so we'll just keep our fingers crossed that when it's dry, it's okay. And then we've got one little one down here. So we'll make that one blue. And then the last one's over here. And then what we're going to have to do next is we're going to have to let them dry and then we'll come back in and do some, probably do some inking. I'm gonna do this one in this lovely green color from Daniel Smith. Mayan blue, I think they call it. Always have a, an issue about blue and green. I often call something um, green when other people would call it blue, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to try putting this on here. So the Mayan blue, I'm just going to put that on top of this mistake and we'll see how that works out when that's dry. I'm going to change the shape as well. I'm not happy with this one at all. It happens. It's not a problem, is it? Be surprised when we put the, um, what do you call it, the body and the so on in, then it'll look much better. I hope. <laughs> We've just had some rain today for the first time in about two months. You could say we've had a drought and uh, Finally, finally some rain and the grass can start to grow. So now I'm going to put the bodies in with um, this uh, Stettler Aquarelle watercolour pencil, Karat Aquarelle. And I'll just drop that into the wet or almost wet paint. If it's not quite wet still, then we can wet it with a brush. This works quite well for butterfly bodies. You can use a pen. I often use um, these Stettler pigment liners. They work well too. And I'll adjust this one up here. Try not to put my arm on top of my work. And I'll leave his antennae because the brush, the pencil's not sharp enough. So it's the next morning and this painting is now dry and uh, now I have to decide what to do with it to make it uh, 
finished. So um, I'm thinking I'm going to try uh, doing some pen work on it. So I need to practice first of all to make sure that my dip pen is working. This is a traditional old uh, dip pen. It's just a plastic handle and it has a metal nib in the end here, which comes out. You can pull it out if you so require like that. So when you buy a set of these, you get nibs like that and a holder like this and the nib just fits into the top there. You can see there's a, a groove, a circular groove, and you push the nib in like that, and then you can just dip. I've got a Sennelier drawing ink here, but any ink uh, will do, any brand, but probably a drawing ink is best. And then you just dip it in and then you can draw and the lines will continue on for quite a while. It will it will draw and you can also write with it too if you want. You can write your name and it's quite elegant really. So if you want a good way of signing your signature, one of these is perfect. So I was thinking, yeah, that seems to be working okay. I was thinking um, I might embellish these butterflies, first of all, perhaps with a little bit of um, slightly more interesting antennae. I'm going to go a little bit wild and take these out and curl them a little bit, which is quite fun. And you can see this, this pen is working quite well. Not having to dip it in every five seconds. So, so we'll do this, this is step number one. It's a lovely day here today. I hope you can hear the birds and everything singing in the background. So having done that, then I think we'll probably do some embellishment of the bodies and maybe extend a little bit. Like that. Make them look a little bit more balanced. And then I was thinking um, we could kind of just sort of go around the, I need to dip in again. Um, just go around the outside edge perhaps. You hold the pen reasonably far from the, um, you know, halfway down the handle sort of thing, then you can get a kind of shaky line, which is what you want. And if a little bit too much ink comes out, perhaps you don't expect, it doesn't really matter because that will dry and it will give you some real texture. It's actually um, slightly raised, this ink, because it's, it's a bit like um, Indian ink, which used to be made from um, the shells of beetles, as far as I remember. Um, is that right? Something like that. Shellac. Shellac, yes. Okay, so we'll just carry on with this. These um, colours turned out quite nicely, I think, the blends. And uh, this one in the end was okay. It's not the best, but it's... Uh, it's Anyway, it's all practice and just it's a matter of relaxation, isn't it? And on these um, grasses, I'm not completely happy with them. And I was thinking I would probably want to put some leaves on there. So I'm not quite sure yet, but um, I also I'm thinking maybe we will put some decoration on these as well first and then we'll see whether we want to put some leaves so i'm just going to put some whoops look at that that can happen doesn't matter just go with the flow so to speak maybe that's where the expression to go with the flow came from
And you could um, use gold as well. And it might be quite nice to just add to these circles with some gold pen. This is um, my, uh, what is it called? It's a hybrid gel. And if you do these with these lines on the base colour, then you're going to get a kind of tapestry, Baroque kind of effect with lots of layers of um, interest. <clears throat> so, um, yes. And this one, the same kind of thing. Keeping the lines wonky. We could do some frills around the outside edge if you want. Um, now, the thing is, if I had continued with this yesterday, which I didn't because I had to wait for it to dry completely, but if I had have lived in a hot climate and I had continued, then I would have done this completely differently. It needed actually to be left overnight for me to reflect and um and decide eventually or get the, to ha allow the idea or the impulse to come because I just, I didn't really know what to do with it yesterday, so. But now I do. And I thank my guardian angel or something like that for this, finally to have allowed me to continue with this little work and it's a meditation really. I mean this is not fine art, it's not even art really, it's illustration if anything and um, but it's relaxing and it's creative and that's the main thing isn't it? If you haven't got a dip pen, I recommend you do get one because um, it is more interesting than um, just an ordinary um, one of these. We use these a lot, don't we? One kind or another, the pigment liners. And they're useful too. They have their uses. I'm not denying that. but. Someone said in one of the comments that she remembered using a, one of these pens in school, and I do too, actually. Um, not quite like this. We had an inkwell in our desk and um, used to use it to fill up our fountain pens because we all had to buy, when we started at grammar school, we had to buy a, an Osmoroid fountain pen. I don't know if any other English ladies on here of my age will remember having the instruction from, from the headmistress to go home and buy an Osmoroid, girls. I don't know why it had to be that particular make. I don't know what was wrong with Parker, but uh, there we are. Okay, so the one that was the most trouble that 
I was worried about all along has turned out to be absolutely fine. Quite like that one now. <clears throat> it's kind of a little bit like embroidery really, isn't it? Which is quite nice. You can just embellish. It's a bit quicker than sewing though. And my, my fingers are not necessarily quite as adept or deft as they used to be. Although, thank goodness, I don't actually, my fingers don't, my hands don't shake yet. This ink, by the way, the colour is, is called Walnut, in case you wondered. And we just, where it's darkest, where I dropped the dark colour in, the gold shows up really nicely. lines as well, emphasising the veins. I'm getting there, my hand's going numb. <laughs> I do hope you give this a try because it really is quite, it's perfectly easy and um, you don't have to do it all in one go like I am. You could do one butterfly and come back to the next one later. Then Okie dokie, let's uh, continue. We're nearly there. You can let your imagination go wherever it wants with your patterns on these. I used to say I didn't have any imagination and I do catch myself sometimes saying that, um, but I try to remember not to because it's everybody has an imagination of some sort and whatever you've been given is what you've been given. And is wonderful. Just got one up the top to do. Now I'm going to have to turn this round and just check. I can still see that. Another dip.
I don't know, the gold pen on this one too. There we are, and this one needs his antennae gilded. And then this one. Okie dokie, so now I'm going to, I think, I think I am going to add some leaves here. So I'm just going to take the gold pen and I'm going to embellish this with leaves. And maybe the odd flower. And I thought it might be quite nice to have a couple of little butterflies just outlined in gold in the distance. And, you know, you can take this as far as you want, really. Just practicing drawing butterfly shapes and embellishing. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of sort of greeny, greeny gold paint and I'm going to come in and paint these leaves. just roughly. I just used, um, I think it's a little bit of olive green with um, Jean Haynes, All That Shimmers gold paint. Maybe I'll put a little bit more gold on these as well. If I did this again, I probably wouldn't use the straight lines, like these grasses. I, I think they're a little bit too for what I was trying to do, I think they're a little bit too straight and I'm not really able to alter that now, really. Um, I don't think, but I can soften it up a little bit by putting leaves on it. I think that's the best I can do. There's a dog hair, I'm gone. I need one of mine.
And perhaps we'll put another little sideways on butterfly up here. So we have a mixture of sort of outlined butterflies and embellished ones. And as you go along, you can see where you feel you want to put them. Okay, well, I think we're probably getting close. I maybe put just a few separate leaves. Around and about, maybe. So after a little bit of reflection, I decided I would, um, I decided it looked a little bit unbalanced. Um, so I thought it might be a good idea to do the same to some of these leaves as I had done to the butterflies and just outline them in brown with the ink, the Sennelier ink. So they look a little bit more in keeping. And I've also lifted a bit of the colour out so it's not quite so, um, not quite so dark. I don't know if that's an improvement, but uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, It's all a matter of just having fun. This is a little bit like the neurographic art where you're just drawing lines and seeing what happens. This is the bit that I don't like. It's a problem. I can't do much about that because it's... Um, it's ink and it was it came in the wrong place, but all I can do really is just use a little bit of um, pH, what's it called, pH, Dr. PH Martin's white and just try to lighten that up a little bit. So hopefully when that's dry it won't show too much and maybe a little bit there. So now I'm going to call it a day, definitely. And I'll leave you with that and an idea for a different way of painting butterflies. So have fun and I'll see you again soon. Bye everybody, bye bye.